Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. One of the most common questions I'm asked is about gluten and its association with autoimmune disease. Unfortunately, autoimmune diseases, of which there are over 100, if not 200, um, are, are very common and becoming more so. And when you think of autoimmune diseases, it can get a little complex because there are so many different ones and they seem to be so different. They certainly are in their presentation and in their symptoms because if you think of type 1 diabetes and then you think of fibromyalgia and you think of MS and you think of rheumatoid arthritis, these are all very different diseases and they don't seem to have anything really much in common, but they actually do because they're all autoimmune, meaning your immune system is attacking you, which is not what the immune system is supposed to do, of course. It's supposed to attack bad guys. It's supposed to attack cancer cells and toxins and parasites and amoebas and, you know, things that are bad and foreign. So when it starts attacking the body itself, it's confused. So what we have said for a very long time and what we first said publicly in our book The Gluten Effect back in 2009 was that the gut had a lot to do with autoimmune disease. And then we looked at things that went into the gut that very much stressed the immune system and we said that we felt there was a strong correlation between gluten intolerance and autoimmune disease. And not just celiac disease because celiac in itself is an autoimmune disease the immune system is attacking your own small intestine, um, but even going into gluten sensitivity, because that's what we see. So what research now really supports is the fact that looking to the gut and looking to the health of the gut when looking at a root cause for autoimmune disease and something that you should really do to address autoimmune disease such that Hopefully you can do some reversal of it. If you're not reversing it, you're stalling it so it's not getting worse and or you're preventing it from getting so much worse that then you develop other autoimmune diseases because that's extremely common. When you have one autoimmune disease, you tend to get others. So it's from this approach. So that's all well and good and research now supports that. But how does that all work? What does your gut have to do with developing autoimmune disease? So the first fact you need to know is that estimated between 70 and 80 percent of your immune system is housed where? Where is it located in your body? In your gut. So there you go. It makes sense that immune system is kind of acting crazy. It's attacking you when it should not be attacking you. It should be attacking foreign invaders. So what's up? Um, the thought is that the immune system has gotten a bit beaten down, it's gotten overstimulated, it gets a little hyper, gets a little overzealous in its, in its attacks. And it literally starts confusing self, good tissue, for a legitimate bad guy. Now that le a legitimate bad guy could have been an infection that you were exposed to, that the immune system wasn't able to easily eradicate and then it sort of kept attacking it and kept attacking it. And to backtrack just a second, it's always the protein structure that tends to be the problem. Whether you're having a sensitivity to gluten, it's, it's gliadin and other proteins as, as part of that gluten grain. If you're having a reaction to dairy products, it's the protein. Um, and even with infections, you, you're, the body is attacking and it's that protein structure that can get a little confusing for the body. So what do I mean by that? Um, let's say you have an infection. Uh, you have Klebsiella pneumonia. The protein of Klebsiella pneumonia is a bit similar to the joints in the body. And there's a specific uh, autoimmune disease known as ankylosing spondylitis. And this is where the body starts to fuse the spine. So people get very hunched over. They don't have much range of motion. It's um, very unpleasant. Uh, disease. It's an autoimmune disease and we pretty much understand now that this infection from Klebsiella pneumonia can be at the root of, of this disease, ankylosing spondylitis. Similar to um, some of the autoimmune diseases of uh, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, we see infection as, as a common underpinning. But why is it that the immune system wasn't able to handle the infection? 
why was it so beaten down that it didn't have the wherewithal to handle that infection? Because not everybody gets ankylosing spondylitis or Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, right? So something was wearing down that immune system first, so, and then when it got exposed to an infection, it wasn't able to tackle it successfully. And that's where food comes in. And we find that gluten is a very, very common food reaction that people have that really weakens the immune system. Because if you think about how often the typical American eats gluten, it's at every meal, if not every meal and every snack, right? So it's very, very common. And the same thing uh, with dairy products. There's some association with that as well. But let's stick with, uh, with gluten right now. And um, so that gluten comes in and it keeps assaulting the immune system because your body's not reacting well to it. So every time the gluten comes in, the immune system goes, oh, here we go again. I've got to attack this gluten again. So then the strength of the immune system goes down, down, down. Then some little opportunistic bacteria, parasite, whatever comes its way. It's not able to um, actually get the better of it. And this infection keeps going. And then what happens? So because of the presence of gluten, because of the presence of an infection, so either or, or both, um, you get this leaky gut that we talk about so much. What does that mean? That means that the small intestine, which should prevent bad guys from leaving, whether it's a food that it considers a toxin or a legitimate bad guy like a parasite or a bacteria, it shouldn't let it out from the confines of that small intestine. But when you have that leaky gut, these things pass through too readily when they should not. So then they pass through out into the bloodstream and now you have the immune system of the bloodstream getting into the party and it starts attacking these bad guys whether it's partially digested gluten or whether it's this partially broken down bacteria, parasite, whatever. So now you have this frenzy in the bloodstream of attack, attack, attack and that immune system gets so revved up that it starts making mistakes. This is where autoimmune comes in. So they call it molecular mimicry. So a molecule, molecule mimic kind of looks like another molecule. So let's say the legitimate bad guy, like the bacteria, has a certain protein structure to it. And as I mentioned earlier, like in ankylosing spondylitis, your joints have a protein structure. And these guys look very, very similar. I usually when I'm lecturing, I give the example of I, I make a a certain shape on the board. Let's say it's a triangle. So I make a perfect triangle and then I make a triangle next to it with just the tip off. So it's just sort of flattening the tip on, on, the, on the triangle. And so those shapes look very, very similar. And I make the analogy that th that's the, the two proteins. They look very, very close. And your immune system, because it's so revved up and so overstimulated, actually makes a mistake. And it starts attacking you because he thinks you're the bad guy. So that's the beginning of autoimmune. So of course, then you say, okay, your immune system's out of control, but why is it out of control? It's out of control because that first thing started it, whether it was the food or whether it was the infection. So you wanna get that out of there, but then the other problem is our leaky gut, right? Because if it was really healthy, it never would have left the small intestine. So, got a couple of things on our hands here. We have to find out what is the thing that's really overstressing the immune system? Very often we find gluten present. Very often we find infections present. Then you've got to heal the gut, right? We have to prevent that stuff from leaving anymore. So that in a nutshell is how the bad, unhealthy gut can lead to autoimmune disease. I hope that makes sense. Sometimes it's a little easier when I'm drawing. So let me know if that uh, helped clear some things up for you because it's a really common question that I get. And uh, please do send me your questions. I love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.